Hey, what is up, guys? And welcome to the Stick CU. This is a little bit weird because I'm presenting, and the main person, the main protagonist of the Sticks fam, is also here. So this is going to be a little bit weird. But obviously, familiar faces all around. We've got Kingdom Soldier drinking tea because you know he's British now. Say hello. Hello. You've made a mistake. It's supposed to be top of the morning to you, but you know, already you. My, my mine is British points, yeah. even though that's technically kind of Irish. And then obviously, you've kind of got my my partner in crime, Tommy. Yeah. Say hello. Good evening. See, here we go. See, I'm loving the British. Good evening. Message. Good evening. It's brilliant. Uh, How are we, my ladies? <laughs> Already the show's just, you know, took a horrible <laughs> turn for the worse. But um, yeah, obviously, welcome. Sorry about the delay. We had a little bit of technical issues. Hashtag blame goalie. Make sure you get that out of your system. Make sure you, you, you tweet him that because I'm sure he'll appreciate it. But we're here. We're live. And we're going to be talking about the European regionals, what was kind of on last weekend. Tommy, I know you watched it. I watched yeah. it. Anthony, what about you? Uh, I watched the first day. And then I've watched since then. I've watched the final and I've peeped a couple of matches. I don't remember. There was a site that on YouTube uploaded everything. So, yeah. Now, that'll be my site. Can I just put that out? What's what? that, I was, could, that was your YouTube channel? You know? Yeah, I really, like I got. I always get annoyed with kind of Gfinity's kind of slow uploading of the VOD. So I thought, whatever, I'll just record it all myself and upload it. What is that? Well, the YouTube channel. Yeah, it was called like Call of Duty VOD or something. Oh, so, I saw uh, that one. I watched the final on Prism. Oh, you watched on a different site. Oh, you Prism traitor. Gaming UK. The Call of Duty so, VOD. So- I saw that one too. If yeah. you are anyone involved in the legal department with Gfinity or Xbox and you do want to seek a lawsuit, obviously, Tommy is not part of the Sticks fam, so <laughs> do not, do not associate any of your presses towards us. <laughs> Tommy, we're good. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know I don't know where that went. But, um, yeah, obviously, for those of you who didn't know, European Regionals, the way it works is 28 oh, teams qualify oh. online through, game, through MLG and game battles. And basically, how it works is... 28 teams from across Europe and the Middle East, because he had a United Arab Emirates qualifier, they kind of all clash together, and the best teams, 28 of them, go to London, go to Europe, go to the Royal Opera House, very prestigious event, and that 28 goes down to 14, so obviously everyone plays each other to qualify, and then those 14 teams eventually end up going to LA. Tommy, what is your thoughts on the uh, the kind of the setup and the way it, the, the way the bracket and the qualification stage worked? Can I just say, before we start, um, it's kind of a bummer for me because I was actually in London for my friend's 23rd and we went oh, past okay. the Royal Opera House and I was like, cry. Like, I like, can't be there. Cry like, like, crying, like, crawling out the doors. In. I was like, let me in. Um, anywho, um, yeah, the overall event, I I think on the NA show, six, NA, I gave it like a 6, 7 out of 10. Um, obviously, the production I, I thought was really good by Gfinity. Um, they got the games moving really, really quickly. There was not really more than like a 10 minute delay i don't think throughout the whole event so on that aspect it was really really good uh matches were really good uh obviously the the kind of competition isn't as good as what we see in north america but regardless i think this year we're going to see the eu scene do better than ever before it looks like there's a lot of solid teams going into champs um team finland were a bit of a surprise i guess they ended up finishing fourth um bit of because the way the bracket worked they ended up getting a bye because i think they did like random seeding so um it made for a bit of a interesting bracket and they ended up getting fourth, but, you know, props to them. They ended up pr- uh, placing it in the prize pool and then, obviously, we got the, uh, as always, we get the um, Epson TCM final, uh, what was good as ever. Um, Epson taking it, out, uh, taking it like 3-1, I think it was. So, yeah, yeah, overall, pretty good event. I can't believe on the Sticks EU, you said the competition's nowhere near as good as the NA team. I was going to make a, a comment about that because <laughs> I think... <laughs> No, but in in reality, they play different. Like, yeah, uh, there is a different level of play, and I don't think it's necessarily their skill, but there's a, I guess it's the climate there. Like, I watched climate. This, this, well, the climate. I mean, yeah. I don't you realize we're not like I don't mean I the climate you. like the weather. I mean, like, I the say, it's not that different. Like, what? it's the culture of gaming is a little bit different. Like, old school yeah. EU were known for. Being in your face, standing up and screaming a lot. I mean, EU events were shouting matches. And yep. I watched, like today, I watched the uplink on Biolab in the finals, uh, TCM versus Epsilon. And I was like, how many times are they going to play the drone? Like, they threw it on top of the yellow building probably yeah. about 
seven times. Like both teams were just playing it over and over. And it's such a slower pace. Like if they did that to a North American team, they would get slayed out and they would lose. They would, the North American teams cap seem to cap uh, 10, 10 uplinks more often. And I think it's just, it's a totally different style of play. Like I, I don't, I didn't necessarily understand it, and I think it's not their skill level. I think it's just that they don't play like the North American teams. And if they try to come over to COD Champs and try that kind of stuff, like throw, like playing the uplink over and over again, North American teams do it when the time's about to run out. But if they tried to do it during the match like that, like I saw Swanee, I think, throw a, a drone on top of the building maybe 40 seconds into the match. I'm like, what is he? why are they playing it so early? Um, and I guess that's a strategy. That they do, yeah. but then Swanee also failed a throw. As a result, he tried to throw it through the glass and it bounced off because it wasn't broken. And they ended up scoring, and TCM ended up scoring, and that's how it helped them catch up. So, I think you can't do that against an optic. You can't do that against a phase red or black. You can't. I mean, there's teams in North America that if you try to play the ball all the time, they'll just slay, 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 and keep you in your base, and then grab the drone and score repeatedly. So, uh, I don't. Yeah. Know. I think they got to be careful with that. But I don't think uh, to Tommy's point. I don't necessarily think it's a – they're just not at the same level. Yeah. I think their play style – It's just different. It may, I don't want to say it makes them detriments, but <laughs> – Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you're on the European show, okay? It puts them, well, it, it puts them in um, – it makes it harder for them to win. I'll mm-hmm. say that because AM teams – like. These teams that come out and, and surprise, like Revenge Stunner, these teams that come out and surprise the top teams in North America, it's because they play different. So maybe yeah. it'll work. They but do, I don't yeah, think they do play different. Work. I mean, I think that's a fair point. I think, um, especially in CTF in Uplink, that's apparent. A lot of people, I think, across the weekend would say that looking at the EU's kind of CTF and Uplink game, that it, it was weaker. But I don't think, as you say, it was weaker. It was just different. Um, and, it, you know, it could, it could make... Um, you know, for EU teams doing well in uplink and CTF, you never know. Um, but we'll have to wait and see, I guess. I think, to be honest, like the way Europeans play uplink is a little bit different because a lot of them were under practice. I mean, originally in the European rule set, there was actually some controversy with uplink and it actually wasn't played at, I believe it was I series, it wasn't played. Yeah. So oh. that means all the top teams weren't as fresh to the game mode as obviously the American teams who's playing in the league mm. and so on and so forth. Hence why, to be honest, Europeans can't throw. Like, we, we, we can't score one-pointers, to be honest. Our, our opening game is really embarrassing from a, from a spectator point of view. It's a little bit bad. Um, but again, like I think the resets kind of become a very traditional thing in the European teams, especially if you see, if you've got the drone in your hand and two, three members of your team go down. Rather than you know trying to run it into their spawns, you just go for the reset because you know it's a safer way waiting for your team to spawn up. But again, well, if if he messes it up like Swanee did apparently, I didn't see <laughs> the game. But then you're in a little bit of a problem. My question though, Rage, is like I understand resetting it, but they don't throw it off the map. They throw it on a building where it does the delay. Yeah. Like yeah. so, it's the delayed reset, and I just don't. I guess they're waiting for their teammates to spawn. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying I don't think that'll work in North America. Well, yeah, I mean, again, it should be interesting to see how it does, but I think this strange, this, this, this kind of inconsistency with the tactics might actually also pay into the Europeans' favour, the fact that, obviously, North American teams aren't kind of used to this slow-paced game mm-hmm. mode. And it's something what kind of we saw last year, Card Champs, with the Australian teams. They played the game completely differently, and obviously, as a result, we've seen a few Australian teams surprise their one finish in the top 12 and even the top 6. So I have a feeling that, hopefully... Hopefully, from a European standpoint, it kind of has a positive effect and it makes some of the American teams a little bit confused and we win a lot of uplinks. And hopefully, <laughs> top four. I think Epsilon. Epsilon especially, um, you know. One thing I think, I, I, the biggest thing I think I learned from the weekend was um, a, a lot of teams were using the tactic in uplink to, you know, throw the ball and then pick it up to regain the armor. That's something that, you know, wasn't kind of thought about at the start of the game, but more and more teams you now see using it. Because obviously, if they take some shots... And then they can get to cover. All they have to do is throw it away, pick it back up. They get more armor. Uh, but I definitely think that yeah, they're they're definitely throwing the drone more on like buildings instead of throwing it out of play. Well, obviously, you know, then they've got to wait like fifteen seconds, or whatever it is. So from that aspect, it does make for a slow paced game. But as Rage says, I think that may ca- catch some uh, North American and even you know like Australian teams and you know down down in APAC, you know, off guard. And who knows? It could, but it's only going to work for. 
maybe Epsilon or TC. It's got to be a team that can slay. Like, if you throw the drone off the map and you can't slay out against one of these North American teams, you're basically you're basically yeah. just putting yourself at a disadvantage. Like, because you're going to get let them choose where you spawn. And controlling spawns is all of the North American game. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's Call of Duty in general, but controlling spawns is is mostly what North American teams try to do against each other. It's a it's a back and forth of spawn control, of spawn influence, you know. And so I think if you if you're gonna throw the ball on top of the map, great, but you better <laughs> control the spawns. Yeah. So that when the ball respawns, you actually can grab it and score. And Epsilon did that good against TCM. So um maybe they can try that against the North Americans and see what happens. Well, hopefully so. I mean obviously I'm sure Tommy's in the same boat. I know. I know he's a little bit of a fanboy of the American team, but hopefully, as European teams, I'm being you know... realistic. I'm being realistic. Come <laughs> oh, on, I'm being unrealistic. I'm no, saying you're not Epsilon being first, TCM second. You know, <laughs> and aware Optic gaming third. Aware, no, aware, aware. <laughs> I reckon Optic might be able to pinch fourth, but you know, I don't think. <laughs> no, they're, they're, playing... no, they're not even getting in the money. They're not even in the money. Oh, oh, no. No. I put mind freak in front of them. Uh, to be honest, Team Finland looks really, really strong. I can see them going for at least that top six. <laughs> oh my god! No, no. But anyway, oh. anyway, anyway, anyway. Let's let's instantly pull this back from you know a little bit more formal. Um, let's talk about the UK teams. I mean, obviously, Tommy and myself are, are British or English, uh, United Kingdomish. So yeah, you know, trying to be a little bit biased. Kingdom. Sorry to make you feel left out, but you know, Royal Britannia. Um, <laughs> Aware TCM Epsilon Infused or Qualified. Tommy, did that really surprise you? And Kingdom Soldier, did that really surprise you as well that those four teams qualified for the UK region? Um, I think TCM and Epsilon Dead Certs, I think no one really predicted uh, Barrage and was it Ambition, I think, to qualify yeah. out of them. No offense to them, you know, they are, you know, relatively good teams but you know the, the caliber of them two teams they weren't beating them um then we had what we had the intensity versus uh aware, aware. game was it oh. yeah um yeah aware definitely i thought they'd take that and then obviously the upset i thought was infused taking it over millennium but then obviously uh. we've got all the drama as well so you know but i honestly thought yes. Millennium would take it they were up like four two and then they ended up you know um losing so i'm gutted for marky b and carnage and everyone else in that squad but you know you got to turn up there's only one series if you don't turn up you lose so marky b said in an interview that um they just didn't make plays that they normally make he he uh, he was trying his hardest not to you could tell though that it was weighing on him but he was trying so hard to not like be so sad about it he was like there's other tournaments coming up but it's like no 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 this is the no, this is the tournament. like this when is... you when you choke your way out of this and when you're the only person on your team that gets over a 1kd and your entire the rest of your teammates um are all being slayed out that really hurts like i mean i can can you imagine if like swanee got over a 1kd and the rest of his team just were like 0.8s and 0.9s and weren't able to slay against whatever team they played in the first round and they just got disqualified like i mean for millennium that was that was such a hard move and i it would be great if marky b could join um infused because it kind of sucks that now this yeah. team that disqualified millennium actually is probably going to do really bad with a pickup player yeah. that isn't reedy. So I, I it just, that, was, think, that whole situation really sucks. Yeah, I, I think Rage can kind of shed some light on who they could potentially pick up, though. I think you know better than both of us who who is out there to pick up. I think you, you were saying in the chat the other day. I don't know if you can say it on stream, but I've kind of um, put you on the I spot. probably can't say it on stream because, you know, <laughs> you might be a little bit of... Um, <laughs> I thought I might not be able to say what isn't only so confirmed, but I believe someone asked a, qu a question on Twitter, so obviously we'll get around that in a time, and I'll leave my leave my thoughts. But I know nothing. <laughs> I know tell, nothing. Um, but yeah, obviously the whole situation with, with infused and millennium, we kind of have to touch on it. Marky B, I feel so sorry for him. I mean, you know. As soon as he as soon as he lost that game to Infused, you could tell that he was upset. His Twitter was extremely depressing. I mean, I actually had to mute him for like a day because I felt it, it made me want to cry for him. Oh, I felt oh. so, so sorry for him. I mean, obviously, oh. Marky, the first guest on the show, I, I he's a great person. It's just I felt really bad for him in the fact that, you know, 
he wasn't qualifying for the world championships, knowing how passionate he is about the game and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I feel so, so bad for him, especially in the situation now where Infused have three players on their roster, I mean, they're going to be much, much weaker going into the world championships. Yeah. So, th- th- again, as you say, they're probably going to finish dead last. If they finish anything than last or even get out of group stages, I'll be incredibly impressed. So that's not going to look too good. I kind of feel good. That aware intensity game, I'm not very happy. I'm a little bit of an intensity fanboy. Um, so to see him get 3 0 in a brutal fashion, especially that uplink, what pretty much was won in like the last 30 seconds, it made me want to cry. I was in a, I was in a Skype call with Goalie and yeah, I was crying. Um, <laughs> it, it wasn't a pretty sight. You, you also uh, fell asleep, if I remember rightly. Uh, no, 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 no. No, <laughs> <laughs> no but obviously that was incredibly embarrassing. For those of you who missed it, I believe it was Lewis for the intensity lineup. He went some throw it on Biolab into the green uplink portal. He threw it, hit the top green cat, bounced back into him. He died. And then Infuse just walked it into the, into the one point through yeah. green. And it, it was, it was so, so bad. I, it was, I feel so sorry for all the lineups, but again, Aware played it extremely well. TCM, yeah. Epsilon. Yeah, you, you could kind of see them winning. The Barrage game against TCM probably could have been closer, but TCM obviously pulling out all the stocks. Is there any, is there any surprises? Is there any teams what surprised you in the qualification stage, Tommy and Kingdom? Do you feel as if there's you know certain teams where you didn't expect to get far, or certain teams what you never heard of, what kind of stepped up to obviously qualify and even go and win some money on the uh, on the next day? Yeah, well, I think the biggest surprise, well, the biggest surprise on the first day was obviously Millennium not qualified. You know they were. A lot of people would, you know, predict them against um, Infuse to beat them. Uh, then on the second day, biggest upset for me was Team Finland, um, obviously getting in the prize pool. And then obviously, I mean, the way the bracket worked, it was kind of like, it, it was hard, sense. I guess. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I think it should have gone off. It should have got gone off pro points because then it obviously gives the the better teams, the teams that have worked hard throughout the year so far, the better, you know, uh, advantage. Seen, but yeah. You know, they did it that way. Team Finland got a bye. They ended up then playing Hyper Games in round two, who actually, I thought, pretty decent team. Uh, and then, obviously, they got to the semifinals where they played Epson, who they ended up getting 3 0 by. But, you know, th- they made it to the semifinals by beating Hyperlink, uh, Hyper Games. Sorry. So, but I still think that's, you know, a bit of a shock because I don't think they, they were the fourth best team at this LAN event, if I'm honest with you. Yeah, if they, like, if they tried that random seeding, in the North American tournament, <laughs> the rage sweat. on Twitter. Oh my gosh! Like if they like, can you imagine if like they did random seating and Optic Gaming and Optic Nation got put up against oh each gosh. other? Um, um, and to, let's say Stunner to, got a a free round, and uh, I saw Josephs is in the is in the chat. Um, I don't even remember the name of his team because they changed orgs. So let's say that his, you know, top AM team gets a buy as well. Like people yeah. would rage. They would, like, okay, <laughs> Optic Gaming has 555,000 pro points. Is that it? And they're not getting a buy. Like that wouldn't make any sense to me. And so um, the EU scene has become less rage induced probably because the team, the orgs in the EU took a little more of a stance on when their yeah. players rage on Twitter. They drop them and, you know, like it, it's they're been. Dropped. Yeah, they. Just, I mean, whole teams have been dropped. Like the EU scene was the first scene to really do that. Um, and even when they bought, wasn't it? Who was it that purchased? Was it Epsilon that purchased a team over here? And they uh, dropped them yeah, all. Yeah, that was like the yeah. miracles. Yeah, and they uh, dropped them all because they went they team. went crazy. And so I think, I think that um, there's no way North America would allow that. I mean, literally, they don't have a choice if they tried that random seating. But people would go bananas on Twitter. Especially if it put like optic against phase red and and let's say optic lost like people oh my it, it would oh my I would yeah. I would turn off Twitter I'd mute all of Twitter for a day. <laughs> I, I think the worst thing is the fact that there was only one series that would determine whether you did or didn't go to champs. That was just oh, for me. That is just yeah. it because I mean you can have an off series. We we know teams have in the past come out really slow on Friday like optic gaming uh. MLG Columbus was it? They had they went two and zero on day one. Then they came back and went to uh, oh, well they zero and two on uh, day one. Then they came two and zero on day two because they had an off day. You know, if, I think formal traditionally doesn't play well on. They lost. Um, map. They they played horrible on day. One. Exactly. Was, it's the same with the EU. I, I just don't think they should have scheduled it and did the format in the same way as the NA. In my opinion, like I, I said it from the start since I found out how they sh- structured it, but. 
you know, because it, it's unfair to do one regional one way and do another another way. It just, I don't think it's right, but, you know, it is what it is, I guess. I think what it is, is like Activision's attempt of getting the best teams from every country in Europe rather than yeah. the best from Europe. Because obviously it was yeah. the best from Europe we might see infused Millennium and so on and so forth. Yeah, going through. Like countries. Exactly. Because it's as bad as the scene is at the minute. The majority of the UK teams, the four, sorry, the eight UK teams, what actually qualified to go to the regionals, is probably about 80, 90 percent better than all the rest of the European teams. Yeah. So it's a little bit sad. I mean, sorry, sorry if you don't like that, but that's kind of the truth. It's the sad <laughs> yeah. truth as it is in the middle. Well, no, really that's like that. the American teams versus the Canadian teams. But I will say, Canadian players are becoming pretty well known in the American scene. Like I think Joseph's whole team is Canadian. Um, I think Goonjar is Canadian. Um. Yeah. Dudes on Karma. Revenge, aren't they Canadian? Like Naga Finn and those guys. Yeah. None no. of them are Canadian. Goalie. Apparently, we've we've just heard from Base to God goalie that the, <laughs> they're not Canadian. <laughs> yeah, the, the voice from the 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 magical power of goalie that they weren't Canadian. He knows best, so we're gonna we're gonna believe him. But yeah, obviously, Tommy, you spoke about Team Finland being oh, a God. massive upset. The fact that he got to the semi-finals yeah. somehow, somehow, um, yeah, yeah, I'm they not kind sure. of stuck in there. I mean, a lot of people kind of on the radar. Them, obviously, they played against Orbit Sweden to actually qualify, so they'll be going to the World Championships. Their team, their roster. I might even go try and pronounce it. The only, the only name I can kind of pronounce is Gaff Kid, and that's because he kind of became a, a folk legend overnight with the fact that he's just apparently, according to my cat, he's the best search and destroy player. So you know. Yeah, that's quite a, that's quite an achievement for someone who kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything is there anything what kind of surprised you um about that team, Tommy? Because obviously you said you watched the majority of the sport. Sorry, can you can you just say that again? Sorry, I was not paying attention. I do apologize. Uh what team Dropped. are you referring to? Dropped. Um, <laughs> <Shut> no, <up. laughs> I was talking about Team Finland and how they kind of surprised everyone. Okay. Do you, do you have a reason as to why they look so strong? Because I didn't watch. Well, I didn't watch their games, unfortunately. Because I thought, oh, team uh, team Finland, it's not going to be a very good game. How wrong <laughs> I was! Because apparently they they're like the best who attended. Okay. What, what, what was good about them? I have no idea. <laughs> I concur. With Looking that. at their KD, they had overall a zero point eight four KD. Um. No, 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 they didn't. I'm going the wrong way, sorry. <laughs> uh, Team Finland, what, they had... You just have Gaff Kid. Gaff Kid's a search and destroy guard, just... apparently. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to say because, like, they played Team Orbit. Team Orbit clearly were not on the same level as them. That's why they beat them. But then coming into the double elimination bracket, or the single elimination bracket, sorry, they had a bye. Round two, I honestly thought Hyper Games would be... Um, yeah. Uh, team Finland in the in the quarters, but it wasn't the case. The one three one, as you say, they they did look good in S and D. It's fair to say, um, but that I don't think there was anything really like outstanding. I, I'm sorry to put it like that, but like I think they just kind of got a little bit lucky. I'm sorry to put it like that, but that's my best kind of analysis of how they did in this land. And obviously they bit, they came up against Epsilon in the court uh, in the semis and just absolutely got destroyed, like out of the out of the water, like. You know, I think they got uh, nearly in the hundred point club for hard point. S and D, Epson have always looked really good, and they they proved that against uh, Team Finland. Uh, and then I think it was Uplink where they just again played phenomenal. So, yeah, I don't think there was anything special, but you know, they they played consistent. I guess you know if they got to the semi final, they played consistent. That, that's about all you can say. One thing I can remember because a lot of the European pros kind of thought pro points would be irrelevant. A lot of people didn't use pro points. And that's obviously kind of some of what they regret in the future, especially teams like Millennium and Infused who prefer to play Gfinities where they get money rather than pro points. Was understandable in the current situation. But yeah. from what I can remember, I think Geff Kid and his his God Squads pretty much won the majority of the five games for the first the first like month or two of the game coming out because obviously none of the pros are playing in them and obviously they have that Scandinavian connection what's like holy it's like supposed to be the best connection going. So <laughs> I feel as if that might I feel as if that's supposed to be an issue. Um yeah. Like the fact that he had so much pro points, it, he kind of just snuck in there. He, apparently, he's a search and destroy god. I mean, my cats claimed him to be quite good. All of the yeah. European pros cl like, consider him to be one of the best. Uh, so 
again, clearly he must be doing something right. Gef kid. Again, I'm not even going to try and pronounce all the rest of their roster. <laughs> it's all like Swedish, Scandinavian names. And, you know, I struggle with English. So I've hey, got that's, no chance. That's a fair, that's a fair comment. I've got no <laughs> chance speaking like Swedish yeah. or understanding that. Kingdom, did you actually see any of the team Finland as well? Obviously, I know obviously time zone constraints and so on and so forth. So did you manage to catch them at all? Negative. Negative. All right. Well, you know, useful. I mean, look, well, dropped. looking at the <laughs> looking at the statistics, they had a 0.92 uh, KD, twenty-seven point yeah. nine kills by respawn. So, you know, I think that they you know they play they play in America. Oh, yeah, 100%. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no they, they still place fourth. They still place fourth. Um, you know, but yeah, they're they're gonna get wrecked. Um, I mean, come on, they're. There's there's a few realistic. teams in North in there's a few teams in the EU and they have proven that they're really they're the only teams that can give NA teams a run for their money at this point. Um and I don't see the upset happening when they come on this side of the of the water, so to speak. If Finland comes over here, I, I don't see them uh like Finland I don't see them dominate. demolishing wait, their group. Years time. Yeah. I tell you what, yeah, the, the Call of Duty World Championships 2015, there will be a Finnish flag planted in in the main stage. And there'll be <laughs> Gefki on top, proclaim, like proclaiming this land as Finland and like you know, the Viking invasion. <laughs> Taking over stuff. California. <laughs> oh my god, imagine Beautiful. if you played in like Viking hats with like horns and stuff. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. Uh, they're like, oh, no, we don't want these jerseys. What are these jerseys? We're not wearing these. Well, I don't think they actually have an org. You don't actually have an org, so it's like the yeah, fact they're that just. They- Team four Finland. random players who just called themselves after their country. It's like Team England. It's like it's, there's no like organization behind it. I assume they'll probably get picked up by a Norg because they go into the World Championships. It would make sense. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we just had the, uh, the the voice in our ear whisper something, but you know, <laughs> it's actually a good call. But I'm not going to go there. Um, obviously, we talked about them not performing too well in the uh, the the Call of Duty. World Championships, that's kind of been the common trend for last year as well. I mean, last year was quite embarrassing. Pretty much the highest placement Europeans got was top 12. Yeah, but there's three of them. Yeah, three of them got top 12. Do you feel as if that's going to be an issue this year? Do you feel as if, you know, we might be able to break that curse and get top 12? Um, oh, we, I, I, I'm going to say it now. This may be a bit bold, but I honestly think Epsilon, as long as they don't get, like, a really bad bracket, like they should place top eight realistically i think they should place top eight i'm not trying to be biased in any way um yeah i think in the past um like six teams from the eu have placed in the money from the last three call of duty championships and yeah what are you gonna say you know the na scene right yes um no pressure why Why are you saying that (laughs) do you know the na scene um do you know (laughs) tell me name name me three um north american teams that'll probably be a chance that epsilon will beat who will beat because they're Um, gonna finish top eight so they gotta beat. okay uh teams i think will uh they will be um let me just get up this real quick okay so i think uh, Epsilon can be phase black. That may be bold. I know. I think yeah. they can uh, beat the likes of Prophecy, potentially uh, Strictly Business, something around there. Okay. That's the ballpark I'm in. Um, I, that may be re- that may be really bold. I mean, some of you that are watching may think that's outrageous, but yeah, that's just I, my personal belief. I agree with the potential of um, them beating SB, but they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to win the search. They can't yeah. choke. It. But like you, when they went up three zero against TCM, they can't like they let them come back and then it yeah. went to five five. Like they can't let that happen. Uh, but then again, they they played very well in search. I mean, they they against yeah. ambition. They had I know it was only ambition, but they had like two one v threes. They they have the ability. They have the clutch factor. What's why I think they will prevail. I mean, if it goes to a map five, mm-hmm. I I would have no doubt or or com- a lack of confidence in saying that Epson could win it. Uh, I think Epson can be and they they will be on the same level as the North American teams come champs. Okay, we will. See That's what winner. I think. Huh? What'd you say, Rage? Epsilon are going to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, TCM are going to come second with Aware and whoever coming third and fourth. They're going to win. I think TCM has a chance. I think that um, I think Epsilon mm. 
may frustrate themselves out of doing as well as they want. Um, they're very like Mad Cat is very animated, you know. Um, Swanee's mm-hmm. a good leader, but Mad Cat can be very animated, and I can imagine if they're just getting trounced. And oh. apparently we've lost Tommy's video, so you know this should be oh. interesting. And we lost all the video. Oh, all the videos have disappeared. And now, now the video is <laughs> back. Yeah, my video. I don't even know what's happening. I thought it was just Tommy, but apparently it was all of us. So you know, <laughs> hashtag blame Skype. Um, my. Yeah, I know. I know yeah. that as well. Like we're, we're actually a little Am bit I dark. Back? My light is on. Everyone, everyone's like really yeah. dark screen. This is... I'm scared. I'm oh, scared. Kingdoms I'm all over scared. the place. Okay, just bear... We are still live, so just... We will continue talking. Oh, it's like... Uh, it's like we're we'll get in, it sorted. Yeah, it's like we turn the lights off or something. Yeah. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> Anywho, what are you on about, Rage? Um, I can't remember, to be honest. I got scared <laughs> from that brief, that brief lapse of... Well, so, I think, like, I think TCM has a chance if they can hold their composure better than Epsilon. Um, I think oh. both teams are really good. Um, I think TCM proved that, uh, by not bowing out against Epsilon, they kept playing, they kept trying. And if you eliminate that Ninja Diffuse, that's a longer series. Um, Mm -hmm. and so I think that either of those two teams has a chance for top eight. Uh, If you said top four, man, there's a lot of teams in the NA right now because of roster mania that are really good, like that I could name, um, that, Beating, like, if you think about Envy, Denial, Optic Gaming, Optic Nation, who we haven't seen on LAN, FaZe Black is playing their first LAN this weekend. FaZe yeah. Red. I mean, that's six a lot, teams. A lot of that teams have to prove really something. Good. Yeah. And so right. you're talking about those six teams. Um, and I haven't even named Prophecy with Imbos. Um, the game. Yeah. You're, you're, then you're talking about them, these EU teams trying to somehow break into that fold. It is going to be tough. Like it's it's gonna be it's not gonna be an easy feat. And I know we don't have who qualified for regionals yet, but I also haven't mentioned TK. I mean, there's a whole bunch of teams out there that I uh, you know I haven't even named yet. And so uh, I think after regionals this weekend, we'll see kind of the North American teams how they're gonna play. The teams that we haven't seen together on land, how they're gonna do. Um, is Optic Nation gonna step up and play to their cape to their abilities with the number of championships they have? Um, because they basically have impact plus TP, and so um, I think the EU teams better show up, man. They 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 need to bring it. In my High opinion, point. I'm not too yeah. sure about TCM. Um, when when they were in the series against Epson, the only thing I, I had a problem with was when the camera was on them, they were literally sulking, like e just in general. Like I know obviously they're the ninja and everything, but yeah, ninja I, killed. I, them. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. I think TCM are can be like if they lo- lose map one and two or even maybe map one or if they get destroyed in a map show i say they can get down on themselves it looks like but yeah i think the that they have that they have potential the thing is looking about that roster is obviously shane jared moose and gundy wow that was a te- temporary lapse jared of concentration there <laughs> jared is a monster shane yeah. is kind of the hype person if you know if they're winning if everything's going their way shane will be screaming shane will be high-fiving coordinated high fives like you know cheerleading for his team so on and so forth you name it he'll be doing it so i feel as if what you just mentioned is such an important thing about a lot of these european teams i mean epson's kind of an example because you've got people like micah and josh who can bring that hype, can bring that hype yeah and i mean swanee when he when he's on form he's screaming and shouting he he all the, all the players in that epson lineup come bring the hype tcm there's only about one or two players who can continuously bring the yeah. hype so all it takes is for them to get their heads down. All it takes for them to lose a map in a controversial way, like, for example, that Ninja Diffuse, what pretty much killed them, then you're going to have a bit of an issue when it comes to, comes to like, you know, trying composure, to recover from that basically. situation and composure. Yeah, exactly. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> I, I, I got you, buddy. For. I got you. <laughs> Teamwork. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, obviously, the thing about Swanee, the thing about Tommy, the thing about Josh, the thing about my cat is they're all very vocal players. And, I mean, we've all seen when it cuts to them, they always getting happy, especially my cat. I mean, he's got oh, the... Oh, my cat. Oh. He, 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 he's Videos, just like Bob. the... Bear with. He's just like the highlight highlight reels 24-7 is just my cat screaming, 
screaming in front of the camera and, you know, dancing, doing all these arm gestures and so on and so forth. So I feel as if he's got a lot, a lot of hype for the team. I also want to talk about, I don't know if you really know them, but Fable Stars. Does it anyone kind of know a little bit about them? Obviously the roster of Rush, Torres, Semper and Alex T, who's a, a UK player who's kind of, they're a good team, but I feel as if they're being overlooked this uh, this qualification. So Tommy, do you, uh, do you know anything about them? Kingdom, do you know anything about them? I don't know anything that's, about Fable. That's the roster with like one British player and yeah, Rush, Torres, mm-hmm. Semper, and Alexi. Alexi yeah. is a British player. I don't know too much, but I know going into EU regionals, they, there was a lot of hype around that team. A lot of even pro players were saying that this is a team to kind of look out for. But I mean, they got what they lost first round to NXG Rapid in de- uh, the seeding, but they did go to Game Five. So. You know, but there's potential there, I guess. Um, I, di- I don't think I, get, I got to see too much of them, but or what I re- uh, remember at least. But yeah, I honestly think all the teams that qualify, well, most of the teams that qualified from the EU, you know, they're not a team that you can just simply take lightly, lightly at all. I don't think it's not like in years uh, like in the past where we've seen like uh, like the Asian qualifier and like they're at champs using like riot shields. It's nothing. It's it's completely on a different level. Like I don't. I think. Um, most teams are going to have to, you know, come out the gate against these EU teams because otherwise they're going to be caught off guard. That's why I, I honestly feel. Yeah, I mean, I believe going into the qualification game, LXT was listening to music. He had did an interview with, uh, I think it's on the Gfinity channel or something, but he was listening to music according to him. He wasn't really concentrating too hard. So the fact that he had... That, that much confidence in this team, especially considering he didn't place well at his last land, what was Antu Pro. He didn't place well teaming with Rez, what you know, it's kind of because Rez is quite awful. But um, <laughs> I'm sure he won't mind me saying that. He probably won't be watching. But obviously, that team, the fact that he had so much confidence, I mean, Russian Torres and Semper, such big names in, you know, the, the Belgium and the Netherlands, like seeing, to see them obviously team with LXT, who again is such a renowned player. He's, you know, he's got so much history behind him and so on and so forth. I feel as if that team's going to make a lot of upsets. And yeah, let's move on from that. Obviously, we kind of asked some questions on Twitter for you to ask, obviously myself, Tommy, and most importantly, our guest, who isn't really a guest because, you know, he's kind of the founder of the Sticks. King <laughs> Roger. So um, yeah, let me just load up the first question now, see what that is. And of course, it's from someone who's got an incredibly hard at... It's like Bruder Danz Z, with a Z on the end. With Gef Kid as his profile picture, so clearly he's a Team Finland fan. And the question is, best Call of Duty player at the moment, stats-wise slash team player. I assume he's talking about in general, not just the European team, because he didn't really ask that. So unless we want to do a NA best player and an EU best player, just so Why you know, don't you give one divide. that to Kingdom and then we'll do the EU? <laughs> That's so, a good idea. I'm- yeah. So you what do am the I NA. NA best Call of Duty player? Yeah. Gosh, this is gonna Don't hit say Twitter. an Optic member. Um <laughs> What did you say, Goalie? <laughs> Goalie, what was that? Something yes, about OG, I, I heard. Um Did he say Nate shot? What, what? <laughs> I think he did I think he said Nate shot. <laughs> I heard I heard Nate shot. I heard Nate in there somewhere. Um Best Rambo? player? No. <laughs> Um, it is going to be an optic player, but um, that's hard because they're the three slayers on their team are doing so great. Who I'm gonna have to give it to uh the ginger ninja, um Scumpy. Uh, I think formal. What Tommy? Sorry, sorry. formal is doing great. Uh, Krim is doing great. They're all doing great. They all have great games. Uh, Formal is being Swanee, but Scump was number one highest KD in the league. Um, he was in. He was one of the top slayers in the league. He had the highest KD in every game type, and he had the highest KD at the last LAN. Um, and he had uh, a lot of hill time. And so, mm-hmm. Scump has proven that he is not just a slayer, um, but it's like I think it's Jerd at um, at this last event where Jerd <laughs> was the number. He had forty six. Hard point caps, yeah. I believe. I think Tommy yeah. can tell me this. 46 hard point caps. Yeah, but he also just... maintained a 32 point something kills per respawn. But I've got 34 points. Yeah, so that's crazy. Like that's to crazy, maintain yeah. a 34 and 
may and get more caps than anybody else on your team. Um, I mean, if you want a better stat, I worked out the um because there's like an all interaction stat, and um he had forty nine interactions on average per map. What works out an interaction per twelve seconds per oh, map? That's, that's like death. That sounds kills, like killer. Right? So think, think, yeah, think <laughs> think of that. Um, well, and I think Scumpy, I would say Scump because he's in that same company where he has an insane ability to engage the the enemy team a lot, but get a lot of kills doing it. He doesn't, he doesn't like, and I'm not saying Formal's role is exactly what it needs to be. Swanee's role is exactly what it needs to be. Um, Scumpy is a player that pushes the hill and pushes rotations, but gets kills. And so I think I put him as number one. Because he's consistent. He's been consistent in AW like crazy. So, Yeah, I have to agree with Tommy about the European. I'd say formal for my NA player from what I've seen. But European, I'd have to say Jud just because, you know, yeah. the fact that he's playing the objective and he's doing so well as it stands, it playing the objective and putting up numbers for his team is so, so impressive. And yeah, that's going to be the end of that question. Next question, Tommy. Uh, so next question is coming in from... Champy, well, I think it's kind of like replicate Scumpy, but Champy uh, Cod is basically asking, uh, does uh, so, so I was going to say Scump then, uh, does Swanee still have loyalty for the EU? And I'm going to let Rage answer that. Just put that out um, there. I mean, he kind of... Mm, I don't know, it's hard because he... Obviously, the NA scene is so big in comparison to the European scene. He's a... Uh, he, I imagine the fact that he had a taste of the NAC and he's had a taste of streaming for Optic and the amount of views and the amount of revenue that brings to him. And that's always going to obviously be a factor if he gets us to obviously join NA. I don't think he's actually been officially announced to leave Optic. So technically, he's still on Optic, if I'm correct, because he's yeah, never he's been at still dropped. At Optic Swan. Exactly. So he's kept the branding. I mean, from Am2 Pro was the event I was last at of him. He had the Optic Scuff. He was using the Optic Scuff this weekend. So <laughs> everything suggests that he's still strongly a part of Optic. I mean, Hex was, you know, wishing him birthdays and wishing him good luck. So it seems to be that he's still on Optic. So loyalty-wise, I still feel obviously he's loyal to the EU. I mean, he he the first team he went to was Tommy, Josh, and Mike Cat. So it's nice to see that he's loyal to Epsilon as a brand, considering that he stuck through Epsilon. He didn't go to, you know, TTM or another another organization what was considered to be a rival so it's good that he he stuck with that brand so i definitely think there's some loyalty there i mean i know the sort of character swan he is outside of the actual game and he always comes across to be someone who's humble he always comes across to be someone who's quite quite you know grateful for the opportunities he's given so i definitely think that the loyalty's still there yeah i see king with the hand up <laughs> so <laughs> my turn optic is optic um it's like the Embo situation. I don't He's not care. on Optic, but he is. Well, here's the thing. Like, and this is what I've learned about the gaming community with the number of pros we've had on this show and we've had on the 1v1s is when Optic offers you, no matter how... I mean, Sharp said mm -hmm. yes. Merck said yes. Merck, mm -hmm. who was dropped by Optic uh, yeah. and Herb. is now on Envy and is loyal to that team. He's only really been on two teams his entire career. Because I count um, Apex as optic, I still think that that was yeah, just, it, it you know, was. Yeah, Hex saying. couldn't pay for travel, so Apex picked him up. Blah blah blah, you know. But I think that if Swanee still has any chance to be on Optic Gaming and to be a part of that organization, he's gonna take it. He got to feel what it was like to be an Optic member, even though they did worse than anyone ever expected. In like yeah. no, the, I mean to be the worst team in America. <laughs> But go from being the best player and on the best team in the EU had to really that was, had to be really rough. And what Swanee probably decided with Hex because they talk a lot these teams and these players and, and mm -hmm. especially Hector is there was probably a decision that that they asked, "Do you want to go play in the EU? You know, do you think you have a better chance placement wise?" And he probably said, "Yeah, I want to play champs in the EU." So we'll see how things shake out. Um, but I think if the opportunity is still there. No matter how loyal Swanee is to Epsilon in the EU, he'll take yeah. it. I think, oh, yeah. to be honest, though, is like the reason as to why he ended up going to the UK was because Optic Nation was left in that situation where it's Karma or Swanee. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you'll be an idiot to choose Swanee. Two time world that, Karma, that Karma has proven himself in the North American scene, while Swanee hasn't proven himself as much. I mean, as you just said, Tommy, he's, a t he's the only two time world champion. Yeah. That, that's just music to the ears of these organizations. They're music not going to the choose ears Swanee. of. 
of Holly it's Live. Like... <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, exactly. So thousand so dollars is not bad. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um... <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> composure come on guys oh, composure gosh. but um when you're talking yeah, about e-girls just... rage loses it he just... <laughs> okay, yeah, he's I like come on come on guys come on stay composed <laughs> no, but obviously as a fact that there, there's no question that if he made the decision between karma and swanee swanee's going to get the worst deal off the end of it because you know karma is who he is yeah. swanee swanee can qualify quite comfortably in the U- eu Karma, he doesn't want Hex. Probably doesn't want that com- that conflict with Karma. So yeah. it's pretty obvious that he kept him for so on and so forth. Because you know, Karma's he's a very emotional person. He's quite vocal on Twitter if he's a uh, if something goes if wrong. Is, I mean, yeah. We've seen that with the Impact MV if, situation. If you drop Karma, he'll be snapped up like like that. Yeah. Like, but with Swanee, it's a, a little bit different because obviously if he's from the EU. You know, if Karma gets dropped to keep Swanee and then goes over to like. I don't know, Envy or something, you know, like the chances are he may not come back. Whereas Swanee, he can come back because obviously it, it appears they've kept the relationship there. I mean, like you, you've probably seen like the optic videos, like, they, like I think they were impersonating his accent like a, week, a couple of weeks back. So I think they're just keeping him like kind of on good terms just in case, you know, the opportunity does arise again for him to come back. Karma doesn't get dropped. Mm-hmm. Karma leaves. Yes. <laughs> He's that <laughs> caliber of a player he doesn't get Sorry. dropped he leaves no i'm just saying he yeah. if karma left like he left envy um like he left phase if karma leaves then uh maybe but i think the and i made a video about this and people say i'm putting too much you know i'm thinking too much about it but i'm looking at the killer and miracle situation and saying those guys aren't a part of optic optic gaming no they still got Elevate, I think, in their ads. So it's almost like uh, the Tommy situation with Epsilon. You know, he's going to be with them for champs at, with Epsilon. And then yeah. uh, he's going to go off with, I think, Storm is the team he's yeah, creating. His... Yeah. So I think I, I think it's kind of like, I'm not sure. Like, I don't know if you can kind of feed into this kingdom. I'm like under the impression that we may not see, like, Optic Nation's going to have a whole turnaround after champs. I get the impression. Yeah, it's well, definitely I mean, that's the way. They just announced today that season two starts before champs, so I don't know yeah, how in the world it's going to work because they yeah. can't break up before champs. They're not going to want to play online with different people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the biggest event of the year, and so I mean, the biggest thing they have is they are all West Coast, so they can. I mean, their connection is going to be tier one. Yeah, but they got to play host together. Them. They got to be able to play together and win. Yeah. If you can't do that, there's no point. I don't care how how great a roster looks. If they can't win, they can't win. Mm. And that's what right. they realized with Swanee, and which is why they they made a change there because they just could not win. They tried everything, and nothing worked. Um, and they were all positive guys. It just it just didn't work. It's like. J Cap and Clayster on Envy. I'm sorry to keep using it, like no, any right. scenarios, but it's right. kind of like that. This is the six of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna shut up about the NAC now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I just realised how long we was kind of on this question, so I'm gonna move on. I realised that times an issue, so this is gonna be the last question. So as a result, I'm gonna combine two questions in one. Throw a little bit of curveball in there because they're quite similar. Swag LP asks, you know, what a legend Paddy. he is. Paddy, what a legend! He goes. We do who love be, him. Shout out. Who will? Who do you think really replacement will be? Okay. <laughs> hashtag get ready to champs. What? What a hashtag? And then rewind asked as well. What's your opinion on the ready situation? Was it the correct punishment? So we'll go for. What's your opinion on it? Was it the correct punishment? And who do you think they'll pick up? Let's go for Tommy Kingdom, and then I'll finish it off. Um, okay, so what my opinion on it is that, um, although, yes, it was outside of the venue and it was in, like, the hotel lobby or whatever, um, I think G-Finney had to act on it because they like to keep, you know, a standard, um, and I think, you know, if the player is that's technically there for the land, he's still involved, um, and I think that the, they were right to punish him. Um, do I think the punishment was right? Yes, I mean it's it's a fight. That's you know, pretty serious stuff. You know, I, I think G Finney had to take you know severe actions to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And players know that you know if they do act out of proportion, you know whether it be at the event or just outside the event, that you know there will be repercussions. Um, and then in terms of a pickup for Reedy, I'm gonna go with Big T. 
Throw it out there. Just wow. throw it out there. What? <sighs> I it's think it has to be from. an EU person. Um, <laughs> Probably, yeah. If it's an yeah. EU, it's got to be someone like um, um, oh, for his name. Who was the, on the analyst at Gfinity? Uh, Benny uh, Central. Someone Benny like Central. Benny Central. Saying, people are saying Benny Central. Benny Central. A lot of people <laughs> tweeted that at me. I don't know. Like Benny Central. Choke Central. I, Central. I don't know who's available. Oh, I know Benny gosh. Central's available. Though. Oh my gosh, Choke Central. No. Choke no, no, no. Choke no. Central. <laughs> All right, then, so I'm going to say um, the replacement. I mean, I really have no idea because it has to be someone that didn't play in qualifiers, even the online ones, um, or at regionals. And so I, uh, who the heck is there? Like, Fear Crads or some of the other, like, the little pub yeah. stomping team um, that he had. Um, I'd grab the Benson. Best, I'd just grab the best. Benson. Uh, I, I did infused underscore Benson on Twitter. <laughs> Benson, Benson said, you know it. But... I think if they could just pick up <laughs> a really good pub player or something or a top am that didn't want to play this year or couldn't afford it. Um, because you think about it, everybody that is over 18 that plays Call of Duty in the EU is going to try out for champs. So the online qualifiers, they probably played in them. Um, so it's going to be really hard for them to pick someone. Um, do I think it was fair? <sighs> I see somebody in the chat said fear crabs. I actually tweeted that. Um, I think, and this is something somebody brought up when I mentioned it on the sticks on Monday, but it it wasn't at the venue. It wasn't like the match ended and they ran over and started fighting on stage. That would be an automatic disqualification. You're not playing at champs. Your whole team isn't playing at champs. Um, but I think a fight that took place in the lobby or wherever it was, it was not during the event um, between two players that play for... You definitely want to send the message that when we go into a hotel, we don't want altercations and things yeah. to happen that we're responsible for. Because in the future, the hotel says, no, Call of Duty is not coming here. The last time you came here, kill a punch, nade shot in the face. You know, and so... Or eggs. Or eight. Oh, gosh. Oh, <laughs> can you imagine God. killing an eggs got in a fight? Oh, no. oh I was, nade I was... shot, killer, parasite, <laughs> free for all. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh dear, what have we started? Parasite and Hex. Okay, anyway. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> Hex is always going to be in there when it comes to the sticks. Uh, yes. Hex is going to hit with an Optic. We have to mention Optic every 10 seconds. Or, yeah. or... Optic, That's optic, all the chat optic. are going on about. The chat is saying that Hex is British. I'm like, wait, what? Oh gosh. So, I think, personally, um, eliminating them from the tournament was the number one correct decision. I think eliminating Reedy himself from champs was the wrong decision. I think that's Los Angeles. It has nothing to do with this event. You send a message to the hotel and other players by saying, okay, you're not going to go. Like, they either needed to make the team not qualified for champs or let Reedy go. I think taking that one player out for something that was done outside of the event itself, um, I think it was a little harsh. I think it was harsh to the point. It does send a message, I understand, but it was harsh to the point of that team basically having no chance at this point, you know? Do you think then the instead of basically kicking, well, ba banning Reedy, do you think the correct punishment would have been to keep him on the team but not let them play in the seeding tournament and go to LA as a team? Yeah, do you think that would have been... they did. They didn't let him play in the seeding tournament anyway. They eliminated yeah, him from it immediately. Do you, think that if, do you think that's enough? Yes. I okay. think if you tell a team... Okay. Um, if you tell a team... You're going to get the lowest seed in L.A. You're going to be in the hardest bracket, which is probably going to be with Optic Gaming and whoever. Yeah. You know, you're going to get in the lowest. You're going to get the lowest seed out of the EU, but you still can go. Like, you're not going to get to play in the seeding tournament, but you still can go. We're taking we're basically putting you in last place. Like that sends a message to other players that would think about fighting or something like that. Yeah. that I don't want to screw this up for my team where we get the lowest seed because who wants to be in Optic Gaming's bracket? you know, yeah. or, or Denial's bracket, or whoever finishes top in the NA and gets a good seed. Like, who wants to finish in their bracket, or who wants to play out of their bracket from the EU? Because if you're Epsilon, TCM, Aware, any of these good teams, you're going to want to be in a bracket that you actually can win. So you're going to want to play against a team like maybe a Prof or something where you know you can get at least second, and you can try to steal a game from Prophecy or whoever ends up in your bracket. But, yeah, I, I think it was a little harsh. It basically messed things up for Infused, unless... I know Alex has the intel, but 
<laughs> Maybe He's got all the DMs. Don't be giving me this responsibility. <laughs> a good Tell the player. stream, Alex. Tell Maybe them. Maybe Alex is going to go to the COD champs and be on the sticks. Well, I've yeah, just run frantically the written some notes. Like Since you was talking, I've written some notes about placements of my top four people who I reckon are going to replace him. Can replace Reedy, but personally, I feel as if the ban was 100% correct, 100% justified. You know, mm -hmm. I feel as if Gfinity as a brand, Kingdom, you touched on this, they need to ensure that it's never going to happen again. And yeah. the reputation of the company isn't going to tarnish possible future events with hotel companies and so on and so forth. Because at the end of the day, it's only going to look reflectively bad on the company because they'll be like, Why was these two people fighting? Yeah, they were they was part of a gaming event. What gaming event was it? G funny World Championships, Xbox, Microsoft, and it's only going to affect them in a bad way. So obviously, as a result, I can see a hundred percent why the action was taken. Uh -huh. It's just, it's just such an unfortunate situation. The fact that it does affect a few so much. Anyway, my four players who I think this is in no particular order. Before you start oh, yeah. speculating Intel, oh yeah, no particular order. I've got Mellow, Flux, Necrom, and Excellence all written down. Uh, Mellow, okay. What? I know the truth is somewhere in there. No. Um, but anyway. <laughs> oh. Lies. Lies. <laughs> Moving on really quickly. Um, Mellow, Rachel's obviously. Rachel's going a bit red. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try it. Don't no, okay. the camera. Right, okay. okay. I'm just going to, you know, no pad up. No pad up. I'm not. <laughs> no, Come on the face. Come on the face. Mellow. Top 24 He's going in red. tech. Went to the World Championships last year. He knows what it takes to win. He's a good player to pick up. Flux, Epsilon last year. Top 12. Oh, yeah. So, you know, Flux for Epsilon. Good pick up. He didn't qualify. He's eligible to be a pick up. You know, good money on him. Necrome played for Lightning Pandas with that Shane duo. Top 24 with, to be honest, two people who are kind of nobodies from, like, Russia. So, you know... That could be an issue. I'm seeing that chat and I'm not liking it. <laughs> um, then the excellence as well. He's just, you know, excellence is excellence. He's a Call of Duty European legend. He won, well, he didn't win, but he came second in the COD XP final. So bagged himself 200 grand between him, Gunchy, Arsenal and Skek. And from what I can remember, like, excellence won the, won the game with like 0 0.01 second left on the search and destroy diffuse. So, you know, he, as soon as that, he kind of instated his legacy in Call of Duty. You know, he qualified through Brazil five stars for the Brazilian qualifier because I think he's like half Brazilian or a quarter Brazilian, something on those lines. So he has what it takes to win. That's my four. Write them down. Take your bets. There we go. Infused. Infused Mellow. Infused Flux. Infused Necrome or Infused Excellence. Intel, 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 Intel. Probably not. I'm probably going to be wrong, but that's my prediction. Yeah. And now I'm just seeing everyone frantically typing in the chat and I'm getting really scared. <laughs> um, but We definitely don't know who it is. Oh, I got to roll out, guys. I gotta take but my yeah, thing. anyway, I just realized Kingdom Soda needs to go because he has important family matters to do. I mean, me and Tommy, you can sit here for all life because, you know, we're lonely. Yeah, um, we don't do anything. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Make sure you uh, use all the codes down below for your 5% off your scuff. And for your, your kingdom, for your G Fuel, all your G Fuel needs, I need some G Fuel. We'll go there. We'll see you all soon. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.